Hi, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to the next section of our Automation Framework Development with Selenium c -sharp course. And in this section, we'll be talking about extending framework's configuration. So, why are we really extending the configurations of our framework which already is better? Is there any better approach beyond what we have? Well, yes, that's why we are here. We are going to resolve some of the problems faced by a few companies who are actively using EA framework as their base framework of development. And here are a few questions from our students of Exude Automation channel as well as in the Udemy saying they are facing some problem with the global configured XML file while they are using in a different environments. And what is the problem statement actually? Well, currently in our EA framework, we are using global configured XML file to read information for our framework as shown below. And we have a config for each and every attributes of our framework, something like application under test, browser, test type, is log, log path, and build number is reporting username and technology. So these are something which we'll be using across our framework. But sometimes there are some problem with the global config.xml file itself. Well, what is the problem then? The problem is simple. While working with EA framework in remote machine to deploy the code via Jenkins or TFS or running in a remote machine on Azure, the framework expects to have the global config.xml file in its relative path of the bin folder where the DLLs of the framework actually resides. But the problem seems to be simple here. We don't really find that particular config.xml file. We can change the path, we can redeploy the DLL file, and we can make the test working. But while working with local instance of machine in Windows, it works fine. But while working with Jenkins, TFS, and Azure, the problem with relative path really, really sucks. So how are we going to resolve this problem then? Well, c -sharp is the answer once again. We are going to use the configuration manager class of c -sharp. If you recollect our previous section, the working with configuration, we were working with the default configuration of the project, something like app.config file, and we were actually using the configuration manager to read the information. We are actually going to use exactly the same thing this time, but we are going to remodify the code a little bit to customize based on our requirement. So the configuration manager, as we know, is an inbuilt class of C-sharp, which allow us to access configuration information from the app.config file. And the configuration manager class enables you to access machines, applications, and user information. To use the configuration manager class, your project must reference the system.configuration assembly. By default, some project templates like console application do not reference this assembly. So you must manually reference it. Of course, our project actually has this particular reference because we were using this in our demonstration in while working with the developing config section of our course. So we actually have this reference. So we are going to extend that particular piece right now. So we are going to deprecate the global config.xml file starting this section, which means we are not going to use the global config.xml file anymore we are completely deprecating it from our current framework starting this section in favor of configuration manager and hence our config will look something like this as shown in the screenshot below. We can see that we have a EA framework which is a kind of a custom section within our app.config file and there is a test settings again this is a custom tag and there is a test setting within it and you can see that it's a beautiful part which I really, really like in this particular custom config. For instance, if you are running this EA framework in your production or in a staging or in a some pre prod environment, you can actually name different kinds of settings with different kinds of browsers and different kinds of URLs for different environments. For instance, for the pre prod, as you can see the third line, the name of the test setting is pre prod and the AUT is same, but the browser is IE, and the test type is smoke, and you are saying the other things like is log, log path, etc., which is pretty much same, right? So these are 
pretty much exactly the same thing that we brought from the global config.xml file. But these things are going to be residing in the app.config file. So you don't really have to worry about the relative path of where this particular global config.xml file is going to be residing and how to deploy this particular XML file and things like that. Because these are something which will be automatically taken care of by the .NET and even if you're working with Azure or Jenkins and CI environments like TFS, all of them is going to be taken care of by itself. So why don't we use this before? Well, we have some solution like this. Well, it's software code, guys. It always has to be refactored for improving its quality. And that's why we have not did before, and we are doing it right now. So what are the advantages of the configuration manager from the global configured XML file? The first thing, it is faster to access, and you don't need to have a relative path in the code. Even if you change this particular piece of line that you can see, the string file name is equal to environment.current directory dot two string plus slash slash config slash slash config.xml file. If your environment.current directory changes, no problem because this particular app.config file is gonna always reside along with the DLL file. So don't worry about it. And also you can use it for different environments. As you can see that we have different environments just setting like staging, pre-prod and regression. Similarly, you can keep on adding the different kinds of environment within your framework. So that's that's the beautiful things about this particular custom configuration. And it makes your code even more readable, much strongly typed, and it's much industry standard once again. So let's start development of this particular custom configuration from our next video.